So we know Gary Winogrand for photos like these, black and white, complex, almost snapshotty, very raw takes on New York and its landscape and people. However, Winogrand also shot photos like these. So why don't we know about these photos and his color work? And most importantly, what can we learn from these images and Winogrand's example? And that's why we're here today. We're here to discover some potential answers to these questions and also to explore a different side of Gary Winogrand's photography. So without further ado, grab a drink, make yourself comfortable and let's go straight to another video. So Gary Winogrand shot color. That's right, he really did. And apparently he began shooting color in the early 1950s while working as a photojournalist for publications like Sports Illustrated. And after his passing, it was discovered that he had produced more than 45,000 color slides between the early 1950s and the late 1960s, which is an insane number. But then again, Gary photographed every day, so that makes sense. And it is believed that the photographer used industrially manufactured color film as an artistic tool by exploring the potential capacity to reproduce the industrially manufactured colors of consumer goods in post-war America. Which coincidentally is when we see the rise in influence of the advertising industry. And so this color work is not very different in nature from his black and white work in a sense that it captures the same social circles and physical landscape of the USA, creating raw images that explore the poetic sense of the everyday life. And there has been some light shed onto these color photos by an exhibition organized by the Brooklyn Museum in 2019, where the curators describe these photos as focusing onto the changing surfaces of mid-century America, the small absurdities and grandiosities of fellow humans, the beauty of women and the promise of travel. And if I may say so, the camera in Winogrand's work is a curious one and lingers between different scenarios, which therefore makes us reevaluate the meaning of snapshot and photograph as they either destroy or build up more value around these preconceptions or definitions. Well, why don't we know about these photos? If you ask, let me just say that the answer starts by life happened. And what I mean by this is that a, f a projector caught fire. And to give you some background, in 1967, the Museum of Modern Art, who had then a new director um, who was very engaged into street photography and wanted to bring more attention to it, decided to do um, a new um, exhibition where he would uh, basically select three photographers um, and those three photographers were um, Diane Habers, uh, Gary Winogrand, and someone who we'll be talking about in the near future, Lee Friedlander. And basically, there was a projector that was designated in that um, exhibition to basically showcase um, color slides. And I'm not sure if it was only Gary Winogrand's, if it was more artists in there, but I believe that probably everyone had, um, you know, the same, shared the same projector. And what happened is that you know, the slides that you've seen so far, some of them were, uh, some of those images were uh, to be projected in the exhibition. And because the projector caught fire, they never reached the public's eye. And so some slides ended up being destroyed, although they were copies. So that wasn't a big damage. But it would be kind of detrimental to showcasing the work of someone who was at the, you know, peak of his career who was really like photographing still every day. Um, and so um, in this kind of an accident lies the first part of this answer. But as I was doing uh, some more research as to why we have never seen these photos, why they remain kind of anonymous until like 2019, um, I uncovered a few aspects that might have contributed to that. And I wanted to talk to you about them. So it is also speculated that due to his humble background and having to hold a normal job to pay for his bills and support his family like anyone else, Winogrand might have not had the resources 
to produce costly and time-consuming prints of his color slides. Which makes sense, because we do know from our previous video on Gary Winogrand that he left an enormous number of rolls to be processed when he passed away. Another source I read pointed out to an interesting theory that is that Gary's curiosity around color stemmed from the commercial work he was making, therefore he might have continued to associate color with more commercial work and not so much a personal or artistic one, which was also a common view during the 1950s and mid-60s until some photographers broke with that idea. But for all that's worth, Gary Winogrand was definitely a pioneer of color street photography. Well, I honestly think that there's a lot to learn with these photos, but not from a perspective of what they can teach us, but rather what they can open us up to in terms of questions. And as I said before, these photos made me question um, or made me reevaluate what is the difference of a, between a snapshot and a photograph. Why do we make that difference? What makes it different? Um, and why do we place v more value in one rather than the other? And I'd be lying if I sit here and I tell you that I think all these um, you know, images are brilliant and are great. Um, and I think that you know, part of the um, charm of um, Gary Winogrand's work is that he definitely, cu definitely cultivates a snapshot, definitely cultivates like the quick paced kind of like workflow. And I really like that. And I don't think it's a detriment in any way, shape or form. Um, and so these photos made me reevaluate that. But a couple of other things that I think I can tell you about, um, and that might be useful or at least, you know, might give you some food for thought. Who knows? I think Winogrand's photos definitely make very thin and blurry line between photograph and snapshot because of the workflow he had, the speed with which he photographed, and the look of some of his photos. I definitely think asking ourselves these questions lead us to have a more open perspective over photography because everything can be a source of inspiration, whether that is a photo taken by a famous photographer or a photo taken by your grandmother. And in correlation with this, everything is also photographable, which is something Gary Winogrand said, and I totally agree. And these photos show us precisely that, that even sometimes in the most trivial moments in life, we can find beauty in the color reproduction of a skin tone, a detail in someone's clothes, etc. It's like a little visual anecdote. So this has been all for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. It's really, really helpful. And if you'd like to learn more with Gary Winogrand, that video will be right here. And we're going to be talking about composition on that one. Or you can, of course, browse through the channel and see what you like to watch next. Anyways, it's been a pleasure. Um, I hope to see you soon and yeah, I'm out. Peace.